you know, it's, you just never know who you're going to hit it off with or who that person's going to be. And it's usually the most unlikely person or somebody you thought this will never happen. And, you know, life has a funny way of just happening. You can't always get it right the first time. Just ask Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. When the high-profile Hollywood couple first split in 2004, it seemed like romance. Fast forward to 2021, and love is given a second chance. J-Lo and Ben were the it couple of the early 2000s. After a whirlwind romance on a movie set, press fans all around the world were totally obsessed with the match, seemingly made in heaven. And despite spending almost two decades apart, they've proved that love always wins with the shocking but widely loved reunion in 2022. Made in Manhattan, married in Vegas, and living happily ever after in Beverly Hills, Benifer is back and better than ever. In early 2021, there were rumblings of a reunion when Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez were spotted secretly visiting each other on numerous occasions, trying to look casual. Two decades after one of Hollywood's most notable love stories began, it seemed like the former couple were reigniting their spark. They eventually went public with their rekindled romance on Instagram a few months later. JLo and Affleck had remained supportive of one another in the years following their split, always praising each other's achievements. Then, in July 2021, in an Instagram post compiling a ton of images from her 52nd birthday, JLo ended the collection of cute pics with a photo of her kissing none other than Ben Affleck, sending fans into a frenzy. At the Venice Film Festival in September 2021, the duo returned to the red carpet for the first time since reuniting. The pair continued to look more loved up than ever in several more public appearances, hand in hand. But just how did they both rocket to fame? And where did their romance begin? So many film stars have attempted to launch a career in music, and so many hit musicians have sought further success in the movies. Yet none of them has ever matched the monumental achievements of Jennifer Lopez. Three multi-million selling albums and counting, several major blockbusters, Hollywood pay packets breaking the $12 million mark, and a Golden Globe nomination. Jennifer Lopez is truly an all-encompassing superstar. Everything's a challenge, you know what I mean? From the time I started acting, I, I mean, actually, when I started dancing first and singing, that was a challenge to get into the business, just to break in from, you know, living in the Bronx and not having any connections and not knowing anybody, that was a challenge. Then breaking into television was a huge challenge, getting my first video, now making my first album, doing my first movie. So it's all, to me, just different things and different accomplishments, different goals I have, and I'm just gonna, you know, keep on trying. JLo began singing and dancing and taking lessons at the age of five. Her parents were very big on having a strong work ethic. They wanted them to speak English because she grew up in a Spanish family. Um, but they allowed the kids to go around the house and do little shows and things like that. So that's really where JLo made her mark in the singing and dancing world. I was the type of kid who used to cut up my t-shirts and, you know, make a skirt out of a 
pair of pants and because I wanted it to match right. I mean, I've just always been part of who I am, you know. <laughs> After high school, her parents really wanted her to go to college. She went for one semester to Baruch College in Manhattan. That lasted not very long. Um, so she moved out of her parents' house, got an apartment in Manhattan, and that's where she started getting roles in musicals like Oklahoma and things like that. And she even went to Japan uh, where she danced in a show. She began auditioning for dance roles and was eventually selected as a dancer for various music videos. She scored her biggest break as a backing dancer in Janet Jackson's That's the Way Love Goes video in 1993. She was also selected as a backup dancer for New Kids on the Block. In 1993, Jennifer Lopez had been a backup dancer for Janet Jackson. And when Janet asked her to go on a longer extended tour, Lopez said no because she wanted to focus on her own thing and being taken seriously as a performer, actress, and singer in her own right. She managed to land a role alongside Hollywood A-listers Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson in the movie Money Train. After the success of Money Train, she acted alongside Robin Williams in Francis Ford Coppola's comedy drama Jack, propelling herself further up the A-list ladder. 1997 was a big year for J.Lo, personally and professionally. First came a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress for her role in the film Selena. I knew of Selena and I'd heard her music uh, and was an admirer of hers. I knew she was doing great things, but I had never been to a concert or anything. But it was definitely a role that I felt I could sink my teeth into. I mean, it was a good role. Uh, they don't come along like this every day, so. Um, Selena was loved by hundreds of thousands of fans. Did you feel any pressure when deciding to take this part? Can, can you tell us about that? Was there no, pressure? there was no question of whether or not I was going to take it. If it, they were going to give it to me, I was going to do it. <laughs> but of course, there was a lot of pressure um, with whoever would have gotten it um, because she was so beloved and because, you know, it was a huge job. There was a lot to do. You know, she was very fresh in the public's mind. Um, they remembered her. How do you do it without impersonating, trying to impersonate her or being a caricature? You know, you don't want to do any of that. You want to be a real person. And, you know, that's that was the hard part. Right. The first scene, I mean, I, I know I trembled in my seat. I mean, mm -hmm. it was it was amazing. Yeah. How, how did that, that feel, the, the fans just chanting Selena, Selena, Selena? Yeah. You coming into the uh, Eastern yeah. Answer Dome, tell us about that. It was, it was wonderful because when, when I first came out, I didn't know how the fans were going to accept me. And when I did come out, they were yelling Selena and they were yelling Jennifer, which made me feel very at home and that they did accept me in the role and uh, they were there to be supportive and positive. So that was a great feeling. And the way you feel when you watch that first scene, if you just multiply that by like 10,000, that's how I felt when I walked in there and, and then got off. And when I walked up the stairs and they turned the lights down, you know, that was all one take. And I got off there. It was pretty amazing. Steven Soderbergh's film Out of Sight in 1998 truly highlighted J.Lo's potential. Starring alongside George Clooney, the film's success saw both stars suddenly being taken seriously. Karen Sisko, she's a tough girl, but has endearing qualities about her, which I enjoy. <laughs> Is that what attracted you to the role of, of Karen? Yeah, I just think that it was a very good role, a strong woman's role. I'm not saying strong in the fact that's what her character was, but strong in the fact that it, it, it she's part of the story here, you know what I mean? It's not just window dressing and, and very appealing, of course, when you come across a role like that. Mm -hmm. Now, your character and uh, George Clooney's character are almost the, you know, different sides of the same coin. You know, one kind of chose a different path and you're kind of the good path. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's like 
that's one of the good things about the script. It's, it's very gray. It's not black or white. It's like good guys are bad guys and bad guys are good guys. And, you know, someone's doing the right thing and somebody's not doing the right thing. And the good guy kind of does something wrong. You know what I mean? And that's how real life is. And I think that's what makes this so interesting. It's that like you understand why these characters are doing what they're doing. And you could see yourself. You can relate. You can put yourself in their shoes and go, OK, I might have done the same thing. Her debut album, On The Six, was released in June 1999 and made the top 10 on the U.S. charts. Um, I would describe it as kind of like a Latin soul. It's, it's kind of pop, but it's kind of like who I am. I grew up in New York. Um, I'm Puerto Rican, so it's like it's urban, but it definitely has a Latin influence and it's dance music and it's all those things. It's a hybrid of all of that kind of stuff. You'll, you'll understand when you hear it. J-Lo's winning streak was evident, with the album earning a Grammy nomination for Best Dance Recording and two nominations at the Latin Grammy Awards also. J-Lo's debut single, If You Had My Love, was released in May 1999. Prior to the debut of her music, critics wondered why she would take the risk of launching a music career when she was already an established movie star. If You Had My Love was released in May 1999, and she created a record al alongside Britney Spears, but they both topped the charts with their debut single, and that doesn't normally happen. You usually have to wait a little while or pay some dues, but that song did extremely well. A lot of music critics, though, were a little skeptical about her music career because they didn't understand why this big actress wanted to do music. That was kind of unheard of at the time, but she proved them wrong. In 2001, while recording her second album, J-Lo, she decided to tweak her image as she began to develop into a sex symbol. She changed her stage name to J-Lo, a nickname given to her by the fans. The album was a commercial success, debuting at number one on the United States Billboard 200. It featured the hit single, Love Don't Cost a Thing. So in the video, My Love Don't Cost a Thing, great to see this fun beach atmosphere. It's sexy, and it has that famous image of her taking her top off at the end and throwing it towards the camera. And we also get a glimpse of her second husband, Chris Judd. It was in 2001 when J-Lo met backing dancer Chris Judd while filming the video to her single, Love Don't Cost a Thing. And the two married in late 2001. However, in true showbiz fashion, the marriage lasted only a few months, and by 2003, the two were divorced. But true love was just around the corner. In 2002, J-Lo met Hollywood actor Ben Affleck on the set of the film Geely, and love soon blossomed. At the time, J-Lo was still married to her second husband, and she and Affleck went public with their relationship soon after her divorce from Judd. The relationship spawned publicity off the scale, with the pair being renamed Benifer and Affleck even appearing in her music video for the single Jenny from the Block, which was taken from her third studio album, This Is Me Then. So her third studio album, This Is Me Then, had a lot of love songs that were dedicated to her fiance, Ben Affleck. Now the two had become engaged. This was the famous engagement where he gave her a huge pink diamond and that was became all the rage. Everyone wanted pink diamonds for their engagement. But it also was the start of Benefer. And it's one of the first times we saw celebrity names become a hybrid name together. The paparazzi followed them everywhere. Every single moment of their engagement, of their life was chronicled. And this is where we saw kind of a, I don't know, a cleaned up Ben Affleck. He started wearing Gucci and all of Armani and being really dressed up and slick back hair. A very different Ben Affleck than we're used to. J-Lo has so many great songs. I think, I mean, some of them are, are not as great as others, but they're all fun. Of course, the classic that will always be an anthem is Jenny from the Block. And that's a, such an awesome song. So it shows her with these furs and nice cars and like the personal assistant. And yet she's just like totally gritty, totally street. It just shows you can have all these fabulous things, but you can still honestly never forget where you came from and what your roots are. Jenny from the Block really chronicles the love story between 
Ben Affleck and J Lo. You know, she's just saying I'm a regular girl, but they're showing all these images of them out on the ocean in this big fancy boat or in hotel rooms in the paparazzi chase drama Glory Days. A lead role in the romantic comedy Chasing Amy in 1997 would become Ben Affleck's breakthrough, gaining him a lot of praise from critics. Also in 1997, Affleck co-wrote and acted in Good Will Hunting alongside Matt Damon. The screenplay originated in 1992, when Damon wrote a 40-page script for a playwriting class at Harvard University. Affleck and Damon eventually won both the Golden Globe and the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. We've never taken ourselves very seriously or, or considered ourselves, a, you know, we, we know so many writers, there's so many people whose work we admire and whose work we respect. And uh, I think it's real difficult to not feel like uh, an imposter. You know, we sort of feel like the Milli Vanilli of screenwriting. So we're trying to <laughs> let it soak in a little bit. Um, I, I think more than anything that uh, it was it, it was an exercise in frustration because I, 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 whether or not it actually comes to fruition, I think the act of sitting down and kind of taking control of your own life. The problem with being an actor is that, and which means most of the time you're not going to be working and you're going to be trying to be working, and it's really really difficult to. Um, to, to feel like you, you own your own life. And so just the act of sitting down, writing was something we could kind of do on, on our own time and, and feel like we were, we, we, there, was a, there, there was an outlet for this kind of creative energy that we felt like we had, but there, nobody really wanted. And we, we never would have thought really that it was possible. I mean, probably, even 15 years ago, people, you didn't think of independent movies as something that was, you know, you, you could do. So Matt and I thought that we could really make the movie by just raising a little bit of money and making it because guys like, Kevin Smith and Rick Linklater and Spike Lee and all these like, and, and Quentin Tarantino and all these great innovators kind of went out and made monies inexpensively, the Coens. You know, then you thought, oh, well you can make a movie, you know, and you don't have, because we, we never thought that anyone would buy it or that it would actually go through the Hollywood sort of channels, much less, you know, end up winning Academy Awards for God's sake. Armageddon, released in 1998, established Affleck as a viable leading man for Hollywood studio films. Goodwill Hunting had not yet been released during the casting process, and after Affleck's screen test, director Michael Bay dismissed him as a geek. Producer Jerry Bruckheimer convinced him that Affleck would be a star, but he had to lose weight, become tanned, and get his teeth capped before filming began. The film, where he starred opposite Bruce Willis as a blue-collar driller tasked by NASA with stopping an asteroid from colliding with Earth, was a box office success. As long as it says Harry Stamper oil on the rig, you will not disobey my rules. You got that? Yeah, I do got it. Right now, I need to hear five words from you. Uh, I'll never do that again. I'm a fool. That was idiotic. I, I, I mean, that was stupid. I'm an idiot. I know what name's on the sign. I'm not, I What's can't. What's going on? Well, I, I mean, I, you know, I screwed up. I'm a little edgy. How long you worked for me? Five wonderful years. In five years, you have never apologized to me this quickly. Something's going on here, and I'm going to find out what it is. No, 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 no. Well, I'm, I'm turning over. Later in 1998, Affleck had a supporting role as an arrogant English actor in the period romantic comedy Shakespeare in Love, starring his then-girlfriend, Gwyneth Paltrow. Shakespeare in Love won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, while the cast won the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Cast. Affleck reunited with director Michael Bay for the critically derided war drama Pearl Harbor in 2001. A.O. Scott of the New York Times felt Affleck and Kate Beckinsale do what they can with their lines and glow with the satiny shine of real movie stars. Ben Affleck became more involved with television and film production in the early 2000s. He and Damon had set up Pearl Street Films in 1998, named after the street that ran between their childhood homes. While Affleck had been a tabloid figure for much of his career, he was the subject of increased media attention in 2003 because of his relationship with Jennifer Lopez. By the end of the year, Affleck had become, in the words of GQ, the world's most overexposed actor. 
JLo and Ben Affleck got engaged in November of 2002, with Affleck giving her a $2.5 million, 6.1 carat pink diamond ring. She'd had great success in the music industry, but her film career was not going well, especially the film Gigli, which she starred in with Ben Affleck, her fiance. The movie cost um, about $54 million to produce. It only earned $7 million worldwide. Huge bomb, huge stinker for both of them. But they also had another film coming out, which came out um, early in 2004, and it was called Jersey Girl. Now, Jayla only had a small role, and in fact, here's a spoiler, she dies at the beginning. But the film cost about $35 million to make and only made $36 million worldwide. So everyone was saying, stop making movies movies together because these are terrible, terrible movies and you guys don't look good on screen together. Just days before the wedding, the couple made a joint statement announcing the postponement of their wedding due to excessive media attention. Unfortunately, this news went from bad to worse with the couple announcing their split in 2004. Jennifer Lopez hit the headlines once again in 2004 when she secretly married salsa star Mark Anthony. They had briefly dated in the late 1990s before his first marriage and her second. Well, Ben Affleck and J-Lo did not last. They broke up in January 2004. Very public breakup. They said it was the paparazzi and all the media coverage of their relationship, but there were other things going on. You know, people spotted Ben Affleck in strip clubs and things were going on there, and she wasn't happy. So their marriage never happened. So in January, she's all brokenhearted and sad, and a friend of hers swoops in to rescue her, and it's singer Mark Anthony. Um, he just helps her with her broken heart and before you know it she's married and it's only June same year and she's got her third husband it was about a hot five minutes later that Jennifer was spotted with Mark I literally think she and Ben Affleck broke up and she got on the next plane to Mark Anthony Mark and Jennifer had been friends for a long time their relationship had been platonic and then they had briefly dated and then it was platonic again but Mark I think was kind of always in love with her. I think Mark was the guy who is in the background, who you know adores you and thinks you're just God's gift to this earth. And after Ben Affleck kind of broke her heart, I think Jennifer was looking for that kind of reassurance and Mark represented that. The other thing is Mark represented Jennifer's roots. You know, they, they both speak Spanish. She sung lots of songs in Spanish. She loves singing. And I think she connected with Mark in a way that she wouldn't have done with Ben Affleck. And Mark felt familiar. Mark felt like home. Mark felt like he embodied something that was very much a part of her culture growing up as a Latina. And Mark and Jennifer seemed to make sense. So they very quickly got together and they very quickly got married. In fact, Mark's divorce was only finalized from Dianara like a few days before he actually married Jennifer Lopez. After a year away from the music scene, J-Lo released her fourth studio album, Rebirth, in 2005. For her, this was kind of a fresh start. She had gone through a rough couple years with her breakup with Ben Affleck. The movie career wasn't going well. And, you know, she had a new marriage with Mark Anthony, so I think she just felt like this was a fresh start for her, and she didn't have a bunch of love songs to Ben Affleck on this album. You know, she just kept a few simple references to her current husband, but she was really happy with where the album was. Although debuting and peaking at number two in the U.S., the album quickly fell off the charts. The album featured the successful single, Get Right. In the music video, Get Right, J-Lo plays multiple roles. You'll see her as a bartender, you'll see her as the go-go dancer, you even see her as the young working mom, um, a club goer. It's just really kind of fun where she just is playing multiple roles throughout the entire song. And we do get to see another one of those famous J-Lo dance breaks that just, she kills it right there in the middle of the song. She followed up her discography with her first full Spanish album, Como Ama Una Mujer, in 2007. Husband Mark Anthony produced the album, and it reached the number one spot, putting J-Lo back on track with her previous musical successes. For J-Lo's fifth studio album, Como Ama Una Mujer, you know, this was a Spanish language album, and it was the top selling Spanish language album 
ever for that very first week. It had extremely strong sales. The critics weren't as kind, though, because they said, you know, we can really kind of hear her vocal quality and it's kind of weak and stuff like that. But that didn't stop the fans from buying the album. In 2005, J-Lo starred alongside Jane Fonda in the romantic comedy Monster-in-Law. She received $15 million for her role in the film. With a production budget of $43 million, the film went on to gross a total of $115 million worldwide. I don't know why people like seeing women fight. I don't understand it at all myself, but they like that. No, but me and Jane had a good time. It was what? I think it's the hair pulling. The hair pulling? The slapping? Any advice for for daughter-in-laws? How should they behave the best? Daughter-in-laws, how should they behave the best? God, just be polite. Be polite. Act like your mama taught you some manners. You know what I mean? Is this, yeah. is this experience any, any similar to you dealing with mother-in-law in general? Any mother-in-law? Um, no, thank God. No, this is this is a quite, hopefully, very rare experience for anybody. Although the person who did write the script, the first girl, Anya, said that she did have a, a similar experience and that's why she wrote the script. So I guess it's out there. I haven't had it, though. I've been lucky. On November 7, 2007, during the final night of their co-headlining tour, J.Lo and Mark Anthony confirmed they were expecting their first child. The announcement ended months of speculation over the pregnancy. It was a shock that I was having twins. I didn't expect, I didn't even think I was pregnant, to be very honest. I was like, mm, no, it's, it hasn't happened for me for so long. I don't know why it would happen now. And my husband felt like, no, you're pregnant. You're pregnant. And he my, had a sense. Yeah, and I, we went to the doctor, and she checked me, and she was just like, oh, you're having twins. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> of course I'm having twins. J-Lo gave birth to a son, Maximilian David, and a daughter, Emmy Maribel, in Long Island, New York, on February 22nd, 2008. Well, it's funny because, you know, they are not growing up the way I grew up. It's a very different <laughs> kind of existence for them. I grew up in the Bronx, you know, my, both my parents worked their butts off, and me and Mark work our butts off too, but, you know, we have a little bit more than, than they had, a lot more than we had when we were growing up. And so my kids have a different perspective, and I realize that. They're going to have a different perspective on life, and I think one of the most important things to teach them is that they need to make their own way. They have to work very hard, and they have to care about the world around them. And uh, I hope by doing things like this that they'll remember from a very young age that that was something that was always very important to Mark and I. In April 2010, J-Lo starred in the romantic comedy The Backup Plan, her first film role in over three years. I didn't see you. I saw you see me. Forget it, I'll get out, but not because you're right, but because I'm in a terrific mood and you're ruining it. Here's that guy. He's hot. Hi. Did you follow me? Follow you? Okay, now this is getting weird. I know, we keep running into each other. It's crazy. What are you doing tonight? You gonna see him again? I think so. I'll call you. I'll wait for Having received a modest $77 million worldwide, the film received mediocre reviews. I had a lot of fun with this movie. You know, I love comedy. You can have a lot of fun on a set when you do. You're doing a comedy every day. And the working with Alex was amazing. You know, he was a lot of fun to play with. And the film's called The Backup Plan. Yes. Obviously, you're a businesswoman, entrepreneur, singer, actress. <laughs> Did you have a backup plan? I really didn't. I really didn't. I, I don't think you can in this business. If you want to be in this business, it's so competitive that you have to really be focused and you can't have like, oh, I'll fall back on this or whatever, you can't. You just have to go, no, this is what I'm gonna do. And how much of the character was you just actually being yourself and remembering being pregnant and how much of it was acting? It was acting, it was acting. It was all acting. <laughs> no, it wasn't me being myself. I think Zoe and I are very different in many ways. You know, she was kind of a loner. I'm so not a loner. <laughs> I love being around my family and friends and stuff. And she was also emotionally very different than I was. And uh, it was, but it was fun. It was and fun how has having children, how has it changed your life? Oh, God. I mean, it just changes you as a person, you know? Your whole perspective on life is is different because now your heart has opened up in a way that you never knew it could. 
and uh, it just changes you. Changes sure. you. I mean, there was, there was a scene in the movie, a couple scenes where I was like eating and peeing out. They didn't put them in in the first cut, and I was like, listen, you guys, this is very important for women. They need to see me picking out. This is what happens when you're pregnant. You get really sleepy, you get really hungry, you have gas, okay? It's all right. They're gonna laugh, trust me. So yeah, we were very, very, me and the writer, who's also a woman, and had just gone through her own pregnancy, were very adamant about those things. And obviously Zoe, in the end, she can have it all. She can have the family and the man and the work. I mean, how do you balance work and looking after your children? I mean, it's it's a tough balancing act. It really is. You know, I wouldn't say that my life is easier. It's harder now, but it's just, it's better. You know, uh, life is just more beautiful now. And you say you love making comedy. Yes. Um, what was the most fun scene in this? Uh, the most fun scene was probably the water burst scene. And I don't want to give too much away, but You'll laugh. Trust me, you're going to laugh. In June 2010, following the departure of Ellen DeGeneres from American Idol, it was reported that Jennifer Lopez was in talks to join season 10's judging panel. During the same time, J-Lo and Anthony were being considered for a role on The X Factor for their appeal to Latin and international markets. When Jennifer Lopez said yes to American Idol, she was, you know, she was in her 40s. She had had a couple of films that didn't do that well at the box office. And I think she saw it as an opportunity to kind of revitalize her career. Well, a lot of people didn't think it was going to, but in fact, Jennifer was completely right about it. She added so much to the show. She was the perfect judge who sat alongside, you know, people like Keith Urban. She has that emotive, emotional quality where she would tear up when she heard somebody sing something beautifully. She was funny, she's naturally funny, and she was the perfect judge, and she did a fantastic job on the show. It not only revitalized her career, but it also revitalized the program. After her debut on the show in 2011, JLo released her comeback single, On the Floor. This was a great comeback single for her because she hadn't had that massive success she had had earlier in the decade. So for her, this was a great way to remind fans, I'm an artist and let me show you Globe, becoming one of the most successful singles of the year. From 2011 through 2016, JLo graced the American Idol judging table with a positive and supportive attitude towards contestants. It was seen as the remaking of her career, a steady gig that saw her through her divorce from Mark Anthony. You know, after I did American Idol, and you know, before that, you, you're so guarded as an artist, you know, you don't know how much to give, how much to reveal. You reveal a little bit through your music, through the characters you play. But once I did Idol, and I really let people in to see who I really was as a person. Since then, I realized that that has its benefits to it. It also, you know, th there's nothing wrong with showing your vulnerabilities and who you really are. And and um, I don't know, I, I, I don't regret it. I, I, I always do what feels right in the moment. I follow my gut. For months, there had been rumors circulating in the showbiz world about the impending breakup of JLo and Anthony. In 2011, Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony officially announced their split, with Anthony filing for divorce in April 2012. After a successful few months, JLo was back to doing what she does best. She released her eighth studio album, AKA. It was released on June 13, 2014 by Capitol Records, experiencing weak sales. The album produced three singles, including Booty, featuring Pitbull and rapper Iggy Azalea. In June 2014, J-Lo released her latest album, AKA, which was based off of all of her travels around the world from her last tour. It really had inspired her. And she had this fantastic single off the album with Iggy Azalea called Booty. And if you have seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. It's a lot of oiled booty. Booty debuted inside the top 20 in the United States making it her second highest debut on the Billboard Hot 100 after her infamous single, On the Floor. Her successful acting roles continued as she starred in the NBC crime drama series Shades of Blue as Detective Harley Santos, a single mother and police detective who goes undercover for the FBI in order to investigate her own squad. J.Lo also worked as an executive producer for the show which had three successful series and premiered in January 2016. 
I think the most fun part of playing Harley is she's so unlike, she's so much tougher than I am in real life. <laughs> and so steely and so like in control of her emotions whereas i really am not most of the time <laughs> um we have similarities but i think just you know her kind of not care attitude you know um i i wish i didn't care as much sometimes <laughs> in may 2015 jennifer lopez announced her las vegas residency concert show which commenced on january 20th 2016. She signed a three-year contract at Planet Hollywood Zappos Theater, which saw her perform 120 shows. It was amazing to see J-Lo's residency in Las Vegas do so well, because in a career that has had so many amazing highs, it really shows just how powerful and popular, with so many different audiences, she is. And again, it was, a, it was a tramp, and it was something that I think shows, again, she's not just this great actress, but she's an amazing overall entertainer. Having a residency in Las Vegas really solidified Jennifer Lopez as a music sensation. The residency concluded on September 29, 2018, having grossed over $100 million in ticket sales during its three-year run. She was so great in Las Vegas. She did something like 120 shows over three years, and every single night she put the same hard work and dedication into making it a fantastic evening. In my career as a reporter, I've known lots of people who have either worked with her or spent time with her, and everyone says the same thing. She's the hardest working person in showbiz. She's incredibly disciplined. I know someone in, who was in business meetings with her where they would literally come in with a certain snack at an exact time of day because that's when she would eat her you know, boiled eggs or carrot sticks or whatever it was. She is so regimented and disciplined about her eating and her exercise and her work. She never misses a rehearsal. She never misses a workout. Her work ethic is the stuff of legends. I think there's a raw talent and a hard work ethic, and you cannot fault her for that. March 2017 saw romance bloom once again for Jennifer Lopez. She confirmed her relationship with former professional baseball player Alex Rodriguez, posting loved-up photos to her Instagram page. In October of the same year, the pair made plans to move in together, proving their relationship was serious. The reason she and A-Rod are such a perfect couple is that A-Rod has the same kind of hardworking, athletic discipline, part of his ethos that Jennifer does. In April 2018, Jennifer Lopez was named one of Time's 100 Most Influential People in the World, proving that she has maintained her popularity over the years. With earnings of $47 million between June 2017 and June 2018, Forbes listed JLo as the sixth highest paid woman in music. In February 2019, JLo announced that she would embark on her first concert tour in nearly seven years to celebrate her upcoming 50th birthday. Titled It's My Party, the international tour ran from June to August grossing an estimated $54.7 million from 38 shows. I, I try to take care of myself. You know, it's not easy for anybody. I think as you get older, you know, you, you think about it and you go, okay, I wanna, I wanna maintain a youthful quality. I wanna, I wanna be able to run around with my kids. You know, all of those things. And, um, and you have to work at it. I, I do work out and I do try to eat right. And, you know, um, it's, I don't always want to but I do, uh, I force myself at times, and I think that's what it takes. You have to put in the hard work. Nothing comes easy. Uh, if you see anybody doing something and then you're like, wow, look at that, it, it's because they're working hard, for sure. And um, not always because they want to, because <laughs> I know I don't. The following month, while on their beach vacation in the Bahamas in March, Alex Rodriguez asked J-Lo to marry him. Naturally, the two documented the engagement on Instagram, where fans are treated to picturesque shots of the proposal and the stunning diamond ring. Jennifer Lopez made an impactful return to acting in the film Hustlers, for which she also served as an executive producer alongside director Lorene Scarfaria. The thing about J-Lo and Hustlers is that she was 
completely running circles around all of the other women in the movie with her acting chops. And it was fascinating because even though she is 20 years older than some of her co-stars, she seemed as a peer to them. It wasn't like she was trying to play younger. It wasn't like she was trying to be the matriarch. She just was natural. And that's one of the things that's so appealing about J-Lo. And I think why she got such great acclaim for Hustlers is because she's kind of this ageless, enigma like she's just sexy and cool regardless there's a scene at the end of hustlers where she's walking down the road and she has like a crop top and like a puffy coat on and you know my mind is going i know she's 50 years old but it doesn't look like she's trying to dress young it doesn't look like she's trying to you know be something she's not it's just who she is and it works for her so it's it's a really good kind of as a role model too for what for women to if you're being your authentic self you can dress however you want be whoever you want and that's j-lo to a t the film is inspired by a true story following a group of manhattan strippers who con wealthy men for their money and especially for a movie like Hustlers, yeah it's all about girl i know i mean you know being involved with a movie like this, producing a movie like this, starring in a movie like this, is like a dream come true. Um, we all feel so incredibly proud, you know, to have got this movie made and to have so many women working in the key positions of producer, director, stars. It's, it's an amazing thing. And the, and the movie itself, Lorraine did a, a fantastic job, and so did everybody. So I'm excited for people to see it. Okay. JLo's portrayal of a manipulative stripper garnered acclaim from critics with some deeming it the best acting performance of her career, which was Oscar-worthy. The film also gave J.Lo her highest opening weekend at the box office. She garnered nominations for Best Supporting Actress at the Golden Globe Awards, Screen Actors Guild Awards, Critics' Choice Movie Awards, and Independent Spirit Awards. The success of Hustlers was regarded by various media outlets as a symbolic comeback for Jennifer Lopez. In September 2019, it was revealed that Jennifer Lopez would co-headline the Super Bowl 2020 alongside Shakira. The women made history as the first Latina artist to headline the Super Bowl halftime show. Two Latinas doing this at this time in this country at this time, is just, it's just very empowering for us. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm very proud to be able to, to help set and push forth that message. The show combined both singers' best and beloved hits alongside an indomitable display of hip-shaking and hair-flipping. When we finished the first run-through, you know, Shagira looked at me, she was like, that was amazing. And I was like, no, you were amazing. And I think it's, we, it was very, she was like, it's different what we do. And I said, well, it's very Shakira and it's very Jennifer. And I think that's what you're going to get from the performance. Your show and my show feel very different, but very complementary. They complement each other. And I think that we've been working so hard the past weeks to make sure that everything is as good as, good as we can um, uh, feel it, that it is. And, and so everybody can enjoy uh, this Sunday, enjoy a, a, a great show, and we hope that it will be a great show. After his split from J-Lo, Ben Affleck also quickly moved on. He married actress Jennifer Garner in 2005, and the new Hollywood couple welcomed three children together over the years, daughters Violet and Serafina Affleck, and son Samuel Affleck. Ben Affleck began his acting career comeback with his highly acclaimed performance as Superman actor George Reeves in the noir biopic Hollywoodland. He was awarded the Volpe Cup at the Venice Film Festival and was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor. I was really eager to. I, I had a sense that whoever was lucky enough to play the part, um, you know, uh, would be a, would, would, would have a you know a real opportunity on their hands because it it's pretty rich um, in terms of what you're able to do with it. You know, a lot of movies, you know, sort of rush past character and stuff, and you know, have to blast through to keep the plot going. Whereas this really took time to sort of um, examine the nuances of the guy and a, a lot of different sides of him. So it was nice. You know, I've had a kind of interesting career because it's been, I've done a lot of different kinds of things and, and I've done some stuff that's kind of character interesting, supporting roles like this. And I've done some sort of larger, more like bloated action, you know, big movies like that. And kind of, um, you know, look on balance, these are much more interesting. Uh, you do much better in the pocketbook doing the other kind of movies. But it's, it, you know, I've seen it kind of from both sides. 
that isn't really the, the way in which I feel like I've, I've experienced being typecast. I think typecasting now has more to do with people's familiarity with you through gossip magazines and entertainment television shows where they have a, a sense of familiarity with actors that sometimes prevents them from kind of seeing the actor as the character they're playing. I think you do better to stay out of that as much as you possibly can, although that's not um, something I succeeded at doing uh, very well. <laughs> Ben Affleck soon began on his next directorial project, Argo, in 2012 for Warner Brothers. I just feel so incredibly honored to be nominated as a producer for this movie, to be here at the big party, you know? Um, it's tremendous. I mean, we got seven nominations, uh, including Best Picture. It's, I'm elated by that, truly, genuinely thrilled. And uh, like I said, there are nine amazing movies, any of which could win, any of which would deserve to win if they did. Um, and so I don't get into worrying too much about who got what and didn't get what. I mean, uh, you know, I've had many, 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 many years watching from home. Uh, I thought I was excited about making the movie. These guys had a script. I really liked it. I called them up, said I got a, a take for it. You know, will you put me on the movie? And um, I wanted to do the movie and I wanted to work with them. Uh, that's what I thought would happen. You know, I wanted to work on something quality. I did the movie. We all worked really hard. I hope that people would like it. I didn't take an, a more meta, uh, uh, you know, approach to it than that. I was excited to make it. I was excited to work with these guys, the cast we had, and, um, you know, I was willing to let the chips kind of fall where they may as long as we thought we had done something that we, we were interested in. In 2014, he pushed back production on his own directorial project to star as a husband accused of murder in David Fincher's psychological thriller, Gone Girl. Fincher cast him partly because he understood what it felt like to be misrepresented by tabloid media. Sadly, in 2015, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner publicly announced their separation in June 2015, with Affleck continuing to live in a guest house at the family home until mid-2017. They jointly filed for divorce in April 2017, seeking joint physical and legal custody of their children, and it was finalized in October 2018. Given Affleck's growing reputation as a filmmaker, his decision to star as Batman in the 2016 superhero film Batman vs. Superman – Dawn of Justice was regarded as a bewildering choice. Although the casting announcement was met with intense fan backlash, Affleck's performance ultimately earned a positive reception. Affleck reprised his role as Batman later that year, making a brief cameo appearance in Suicide Squad in 2016. He starred as an autistic accountant in the action thriller The Accountant in 2016, which was an unexpected commercial success. It, the, 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 there was a need to do research around autism so that we got that right. And we wanted to make a fun movie that people would like and that was entertaining, but it had to be rooted in, in, uh, you know, in something true that was recognizable to people. I just got a letter from a friend of mine whose son is autistic, and he said, you know, if my son turns out to be an assassin, I'll be thrilled. <laughs> so uh, I took that as high praise. Ben Affleck's starring role as a recovering alcoholic in the sports drama The Way Back in 2020 was widely praised. The themes of the movie were close to home for Affleck. Life, you know, ebbs and flows. You have, there are natural uh, difficulties. Uh, I had this like uh, kind of, I don't know what, very early success as a very young man. Um, and which is difficult to manage, I think at any age, but particularly when you're young. And I had some stuff work and some stuff didn't, and I ran afoul of the press a little bit and became overexposed, causing me to kind of turn around and question, and maybe I was being a little bit hyperbolic for effect in the speech, but causing me to question, like, what do I want to do in this industry? Do I have anything to offer? Should I, what should I be doing? How can I best express myself? And that was around the time that I took up directing, and I really view this as, as, as connected to that decision, because that decision was about, you know, was really fraught with, can I do it? Can I make it? Can I really direct movies and be a director? And to be at the DGA and to be honored with an award by the DGA is definitely more than I ever imagined on the first day of shooting of Gone Baby Gone. After JLo ended her engagement to Alex Rodriguez and Ben Affleck had split from Anna de Armas, the two were spotted hanging out again in 2021. However, sources claim that the pair being spotted together was purely platonic, claiming they had never not been friends.
Then, after nearly two decades after they first split, J-Lo and Ben Affleck were spotted heading off for a week-long vacation to Montana. Following the vacation, the singer flew out to Los Angeles to spend more time with her former fiance, determined not to let distance affect their reunion. The press and their fans were going crazy over the constantly appearing images of the couple being spotted together. Weeks later, Affleck also reportedly took a flight to JLo's residence in Miami to spend more cozy quality time with her. The pair quickly began spending all their free time together, blending their children into one big family. Then in April 2022, in an exclusive video published in her personal fan newsletter, JLo announced that she and Affleck had gotten engaged a year after reuniting. He proposed to her while she was taking a bubble bath. The video featured JLo beaming as she showed off her new engagement ring, an emerald cut pale green diamond. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck tied the knot in a surprise Las Vegas wedding at midnight on July 17, 2022. The singer confirmed the news in her newsletter on the JLo, saying that a low-key ceremony in a chapel was exactly what the two wanted. After their surprise nuptials, the pair jetted off to Paris for a sunny summer holiday and brought along their kids. They hosted a star-studded second private wedding ceremony in August 2022 and embarked on a second honeymoon trip to Italy. Ahead of the release of her forthcoming album, This Is Me Now, and in honor of the 20th anniversary of her third studio album, This Is Me Then, JLo sat down with Zane Lowe for Apple Music to talk about her latest musical venture. During their conversation, she opened up about how Affleck inspired her to get into the recording studio in both instances, 20 years ago and now. In 2021, Affleck appeared as a substitute father figure in George Clooney's coming-of-age drama, The Tender Bar. A friend of mine, Cleve Duvall, who's an actor, who's an Argo, gave me the book a long time ago, uh, a long time ago, but, and I read it, I really liked it, and then I, I didn't even know George was adapting, and I got an email from him, it was actually out of the country, saying, hey, do you want to come do this? And I was like, this is sort of fell from the heavens, you know, it's this amazing part. He kept on t um, touting his multiple sexiest man alive, Awards. He thinks it's an award, but um, he's he's really a wonderful guy and a storyteller, a highest order, and a brilliant director, particularly for actors. It was like it was a gift, you know. He 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 really was so generous in the way he helped me with this the the performance and the advice he had and uh, the experience itself was really uh, wonderful. For the role. Affleck was nominated for the Golden Globe Award and Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Supporting Actor. He also had a supporting role in Ridley Scott's The Last Duel. This same year, J.Lo starred opposite Owen Wilson and Maluma in the romantic comedy Marry Me, released in February 2022. The film grossed over $50 million at the box office while becoming the most streamed day and date film on Peacock and received generally mixed reviews from critics. This is something I know intimately. You know, you know, a lot of actresses could play something like this, but knowing it in the way that I do, I think really helped me um, play this role in a very authentic and real way. Because in every moment, I knew exactly all of the scenes, like, this is what is happening here, this is what it's like. No, that's not how I would say it. That's not how it would go. So I was able to really input on the script in that way um, to make every little detail right. Since their romantic reunion, the couple has been publicly supporting each other's career milestones. 